How do you get everyone? And today I'm checking out the autofocus tools version of one of Siri's recent APS-C Cine lenses, the Sniper 16mm f1.2, which according to Siri is the same as their Nightwalker 16mm f1.2 Cine lens, except in a different body and with autofocus. And interestingly, despite featuring autofocus, this Sniper version of the lens actually costs the same as its Cine lens brother. 400 US dollars or 380 pounds here in the UK, and sometimes it's even on sale cheaper than that. Even if it only offers an APS-C image circle, the full frame equivalent view of 24mm, that's still a very reasonable price for a wide angle autofocus lens with such a very bright maximum aperture. This lens can offer you some real creative possibilities, especially for shooting in the dark or getting noticeably out of focus backgrounds in your images. I'd like to thank Sirui for sending me a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. They have had no input into it at all. And even though it should be optically the same as its Nightwalker brother that I recently tested, I've retested everything about this lens for this video to make sure it's performing properly. Siri's sniper lenses come in a series of shades, black, grey and this rather striking white colour, and its surface feels lovely and smooth. They are currently available for Sony E-mount, Fuji X and Nikon Z-mount mirrorless cameras. Here is this lens's coverage if you shoot with it on full frame. The lens is based on a metal mount but without any noticeable weather sealing. It feels lovely and solid in your hand though, and its weight of 384 grams isn't very heavy at all. The Fuji and Nikon versions of this lens weigh a few grams more. The lens's only control point is its manual focus ring. If you want to shoot in manual focus then you'll have to set it that way in your camera. That focus ring is electronically coupled with your camera, not mechanically, and it turns extremely smoothly. It works quite responsively to being turned, and focus breathing on the 16mm lens, as you can see here, is nicely tamed. This is about as good a performance as you're going to get. The lens's autofocus motor works quietly and accurately. In single shot autofocus mode it works a little slowly, switch over to continuous autofocus mode and it goes a little faster. The lens has a 58mm filter thread size and it comes with a fairly deep plastic hood. The lens is not image stabilised, but if your camera has in-body stabilisation, that will work just fine with it. Overall, the lens looks and feels good to handle and it works without any problems. It doesn't have the fastest autofocus motor that I've ever seen, but on such a wide angle lens that's not really so important. Ok, let's move on and look at image quality. I'll be testing it today on a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, and in-camera corrections are turned on. At f1.2, the lens is fairly sharp in the middle with very good contrast. Impressively, the image corners look about the same here. Stop down to f2 and those corners look very bright and sharp, that's excellent. And back in the middle, we are seeing perfect sharpness here too, nice. The lens stays this sharp down to f11 where a little softness from diffraction is kicking in subtly, and f16 looks softer again. Overall though, this is excellent image quality, just like on a Nightwalker version of the lens. Alright, let's turn off in-camera corrections and take a look at distortion and vignetting, and there's more good news here. The lens projects no real distortion here, and while the corners are noticeably dark at f1.2, I was expecting vignetting to be much worse than this. Stop down to f2 and that vignetting quickly goes away, so that's really an excellent performance. The lens can focus down to 30cm, so that's a little further than average, even for a wide angle optic. Here we're exposed to a clear weakness, at closer distances the lens's contrast bottoms out, leaving us with a very ghostly image. Stop down to f2 for an improvement, and at f2.8 we get a sharp image again, so you definitely will want to stop down a bit when shooting close up. Now let's see how the lens works against bright light. It's a slightly below average performance here, as the lens produces quite a lot of broad flaring. Stop down to f2 as I do here and there's not that much improvement, so that's a real weakness of the tested lens. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma and sun stars. Impressively, even at f1.2, any kind of coma smearing is fairly low here on bright points of light. Stop down to f2 and what is there quickly goes away. Let's move the camera and look for sun stars, they are beginning to emerge at f5.6, from f8 down to f16 they get progressively more emphasised here. 
Let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh, which is somewhat distinctive. At f1.2, you can get some surprisingly out of focus backgrounds, it's a very artistic effect. As you can see, difficult backgrounds can look a little busy, with a little outlining on specular highlights, although it's nothing disastrous. More deeply out of focus backgrounds look very pleasing though. And related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.2, the ghostly close-up image quality makes it hard to see, well, just about anything really. At f2, contrast returns and some visible colour fringing on bokeh highlights is visible. At f2.8, it's still there, but at f4, it's mostly gone. Overall, well, you're getting quite a lot of lens for your $400 year. It's very sharp, even at its brightest apertures, with good contrast, low vignetting and distortion, nice bogger, low coma. Not much more you could ask for from a wide-angle lens year. It's definitely the best lens I've tested from Siri so far, and it comes highly recommended. Thanks for watching everyone! If you find these videos helpful and find yourself watching them often, then as usual, Patreon links in the description below, where supporters get extra bonus content, early access to some of my more interesting reviews, plus a warm, happy feeling deep inside of them for helping to keep this channel trucking on. Ciao for now everyone!